this is the rangefinder from camera number one so I'll put a number one on there so that I know which one I'm dealing with I'm just going to get the rangefinder from camera number three out and I want to compare them and make sure well I'm interested to see if there were any changes made to the rangefinder from the earliest examples to the more common run I'll just label this with a three And we'll just check these range finders and see if I see any differences. Well, I do see differences straight away. Okay. Right, so camera number three, you can see that there are grooves. This is slotted. There's slotted grooves here allowing for the movement of the front lens group backwards or forwards along the arm. On camera number one, there's just simple holes, they're countersunk head screws, there's no adjustment. I'm looking closely to see if there were any other differences visible from the base here. And to be honest, I'm not really seeing anything. Okay, so we'll flip it up, have a look from the front. See if there's anything obvious. Now, the spring, the return spring for the frames is, it looks like it, it looks like someone's touched that up with some lacquer as though to fix it in position. I'm not convinced that would be a good thing to do, but there's certainly lacquer at that point. There's none on here, and I'm not used to seeing that, so that might be an aberration. I'm looking closely to see if I see any design differences. Okay, so here we have number one. You'll see that this bracket has this piece in it. It's got that notch in it. On camera number three, that's just straight. I'm not sure what function that notch could have served. But certainly they did away with it fairly promptly. The only thing that comes to mind as a possibility is that they made the parts and it made this arm too long so in order to shorten the arm they put that little step in it which would have brought the pin closer to the base now that's the only thing that strikes me is that they may have done that during production when for whatever reason they discovered that they'd made the parts too long. Everything else looks the same. Not really noticing any other differences. So I'll tip these over. I'll have a look at the tops of the meters. See if there's anything here that I notice. And what I'm looking for is different screw styles, diff extra or fewer adjustments. But to be honest, I'm not seeing anything. So the range finders are, are pretty similar. And from a functional point of view, they're probably fine. Uh, when you're servicing cameras, the likelihood of you needing to move that front lens backwards or forwards along the arm is not very high. If that had been set in the factory, I would assume that that was correct. It was, isn't something you'd normally want to tamper with. And so, functionally, in the repair process, leave those two screws alone in both cases. I wouldn't expect that to 
there to be any reason to, to uh, start playing around with those. Okay, so we'll start with the rangefinder from number three because that's more the one you're most likely to see. And I'll show you what I do to go about taking these apart to clean them. Now in this case, I can see little patches of rust. And that means there's been a little bit of moisture in here at some stage. It's not heavy rust, you can see it just disappears when I touch it really. If I got a toothpick you'd probably polish that completely away, yeah you can. But that is a sign that there's been moisture in here at some stage and uh, probably just tiny droplets have condensed there and it's promoted corrosion. Anyway, we'll get this apart. First thing I want to do is remove this screw here. Now I've got a tool here, a spanner. It was made by Mr. Belgen. The same bloke who made the wonderful tools for removing the uh, lens retaining ring, shutter retaining rings. Since he's no longer making those, he's probably no longer making these either. But this is a wonderful tool. It's, it's adjustable, so you can adjust the spacing of the, the pins simply by moving the knurled wheel at the end. Okay, so that loosened up immediately. If you haven't got a tool like that, what do you use? Well, I've got a very stiff pair of tweezers here. And typically that's what I would use to do something like that up. But if it wasn't too tight, they would get it loose. And what else? Well here I've got a pair of circlet pliers. The spring's off them, that's long gone. You can see the tips. The tips have been dealt to with files or dremels or something of that nature, I don't really remember. But they come down now to two fairly pointy ends. That makes a good tool to use to undo screws like that. And they're nice and cheap. You can, I didn't buy these new. I picked them up somewhere at a garage sale and uh, probably paid $5 for them if that. So tools like that, you need to make these things yourself as often as not. Right, let's start here anyway. We've got this one loose. We can remove the screw. There's a wavy washer under that. And I'm just letting this come away on the spring. The spring passes through a little hole here in the frame. And here we have a, uh, a split bush. And take that out. That's brass, I think, or bronze. All of these parts are quite dirty with sticky old grease. They'll need to be cleaned. But, but coming back to the body of the rangefinder. This lever is connected to our focus arm of the rangefinder and that shifts the parallax correction, it shifts the frame in the finder to give you some parallax correction. Now there's another lever here, this one. This one changes the visible frames that you see in the finder and that's coupled to another arm in the camera. That's coupled to the not the centre of the pin, rangefinder pin, it's coupled to the brass collar around it. Okay, so enough of that, let's get these pieces apart. I'll remove that screw. Take note of which way up that arm goes. 
there are two screws here they're probably identical to that screw we've just removed you can see my screwdriver is a bit magnetic here we can take that arm off now these components are fairly small fairly light and uh, like all such things easily damaged right so how much more do we want to take off well I want to take out this assembly this has got our frame lines and so forth in it and I, I like to clean that separately how's that held on well there's a bracket here that clamps it the screws for the bracket are on this face here and here or here and here, I'm telling you lies here and here so we need to get those screws loose I'm supporting this with my fingers alright, so those screws are slackened off a part turn now this is, assembly is normally locked on here with a touch of lacquer We'll put it back there in a useful spot later. And there's the piece that we're interested in. You can see this lever here. As it moves up and down, it exposes different sets of grooves that effectively um, allow the light through the mask to show you the frame lines we're interested in. What else can we say about that? This piece, do not put this through an ultrasonic cleaner. Do not get it wet. That piece in there with frame lines on it, which are masked by that moving piece, that's like a piece of film. It's like a piece of film. Like uh, you got that except got that wet to any extent, or you had to go at it with some cleaner what would happen is that the uh, emulsion would probably just melt and you'd end up with great light patches where the dark emulsion had fallen away to put that to one side that's not going through any cleaners here we've got the body of the rangefinder and the only other thing I'll take out of this leave the, the mirrors alone there's a screw here at the top I'll zoom you in a bit no, we're not getting any more zoom. A single screw on that bracket. There's our bracket. It retains the rear glass. And we'll flick that rear glass out. Now that glass has got some blob of dust or rubbish on it. And then we'll clean that manually. Now that glass is uh, flat on one side and convex on the other. The convex side goes inwards towards the front of the camera. The flat side goes outwards towards the back of the camera. Don't mess it up. So here we've got the kit, the body of the rangefinder. I'm going to clean this first with a little bit of naphtha to remove grease and dirt that I can see here before I clean this in the ultrasonic. Now the reason you clean it first like this is that you don't want oil and grease or similar rubbish coming out in suspension in your cleaning fluid while you're cleaning it in the ultrasonic cleaner because there's nothing more likely than that will just transfer itself to the glass surfaces and then you'll end up with uh, a haze that's as bad as what you started off with. Well you can see that glass there Look at the state of that. That doesn't look particularly clean, does it? Now, half that filth will be on one side of the glass and half the filth will be on the other. I usually pre-clean the front surface here, the surface that faces towards the front of the camera. That's plain glass. The other surface, the one that faces towards the back of the camera, 
That's semi-silvered. You start poking at that, you're likely to lose your silvering. Don't do it. But the front surface is probably plain glass. In fact, I'm sure it is. I'm going to get some glass cleaner and pre-clean that. And the reason I do that is that I don't want to clean the whole assembly in the ultrasonic cleaner any longer than I have to in order to get it clean. We've got a front surface silvered mirror here, and we've got a semi-silvered mirror here. That silver is um, delicate. You clean it too long, it will clean all the way, and it won't do you any good. So, to make sure I don't have to clean it any longer than I absolutely have to, I pre-clean this surface with some glass cleaner. I'll do that now. That's all I'm using. Just stuff you'd use to clean your windows, nothing magic. Right, so I'll just take a tiny drop of glass cleaner on a cotton bud and I'll clean this front surface. Be gentle, you don't want to disturb the mirror. It's mounted fairly robustly but uh, you could disturb it and then you're going to have to, have to fight to get it correctly adjusted afterwards. Right, well I'm quite happy I've got the front surface of that glass clean now. So that residual rubbish you can see there, that it must be on the other face. The semi-silvered face that you see through the eyepiece. I'm not poking at that with a cotton bud. Right, this can go into the ultrasonic cleaner. So what do I do? I put it into a small glass with some hot water and a couple of drops of ordinary dish soap. I put the glass into the ultrasonic cleaner surrounded by water and then I'll give this three minutes and then after that I'll pull it out I'll run it under the hot tap and then with my rocket blower I will blow all the droplets and moisture away I'll do that at the same time as I'm drying the thing with a hairdryer and if that sounds like I haven't got enough hands you're dead right I haven't got enough hands to do that you need to get imaginative. Okay, so I've got this clean now. It looks a lot better. There's certainly visible marking on the semi-silvered mirror. And I would say that's silver loss. Um, the front surface mirror looks pretty good to me. You get pitting in the silvering. And I think we've got that in both cases. Some of that maybe down to the ultrasonic cleaner. I gave that three minutes. Perhaps I should have only given it two minutes. It's always very difficult to say. But it, apart from that, everything else is looking very good. It only took me about five minutes to come back to the camera here with it. So this piece is looking okay. And I can start reassembling things. And I can probably start by dropping this assembly back in place. Now the return spring for that little fine wire here, make sure you don't get that trapped underneath or you won't like the results. This is going to have to be kept square with the frame. You may need to uh, move it around a bit but generally speaking if the front surface is a dead level, top and bottom, everything is going to be good. I'm going to lock that in place with a touch of lacquer when I'm done. Just checking the look of that. That looks square and level. That's good. So I'll just put a touch of lacquer on there. I'll use clear lacquer because I've got some. But you could use just about anything else as long as you don't splash it about and get it on any of the optical surfaces. 
So the rear, the glass for the eyepiece, that's here. That's pretty grimy. The outside surface, the flat surface, or close enough to flat, that's the dirtiest, which is hardly surprising. That's the one that's, that's most open to the atmosphere and fingers. But I'll clean both surfaces here with glass cleaner and that can be put back into the frame. But there's nothing special about that. I'll just put that on a piece of uh, paper towel use some glass cleaner on a cotton bud, make sure I clean both surfaces well then I'll polish that lens with a, uh, a lint free cloth typically what I use for that is an extremely well washed old handkerchief the type that your wife's always trying to throw away because they're so threadbare they make perfect things for doing lenses right that looks a lot cleaner I'll put the retaining clip on the back and put its screw in place. Now take note of the screws, where they came from and so forth. You don't want to start mixing things up. The tiny chip on the glass of that lens there, I don't really know what to make of that. It may mean the camera had been dropped at some stage, which of course is not at all unusual for cameras. Okay, so I've got that rear eyepiece in place and I'll just hold it up to the light. Make sure everything looks nice and clear. That looks very good. I need to reassemble this other stuff into here. Now I haven't cleaned these components first. These pieces, I want to clean them first with a bit of naphtha on a cotton bud. Just to make sure that any old lubricant on there is gone. The uh, arm in particular showed quite a bit of dried grease and I want rid of that because it's typically old grease is no longer any use as a lubricant it's often dried out to the point where it's gone fairly sticky and the other aspect of that is that uh, it will also gather up dust over time and gathering up dust it then becomes a grinding paste. So these components, they don't really require much in the way of lubrication. But what I will do here is I'll just give that a wipe with a bit of molybdenum and paste on the bottom surface. This one just pivots so I'll just run some through the pivot. This one. Now that's got a pin on the end of it. That pin has to couple into a slot. In here I'll show you that piece it couples to. It couples to this slot right here. Let's see if we can get this in position. Yeah, that's, that fell into position. And these are shoulder screws. They act as guides for that uh, bracket. If they are greasy or dirty, you need to clean those as well. Now the bracket is getting caught under the shoulder of that screw, which of course is no good. Okay. 
Okay, so that should move relatively freely. It does. And as it moves, it should move those frames. That should return under its own steam, but it doesn't need to have much tension. I'm just checking that. Oh, that's good. Okay, so this little arm here. Goes on over that pin. Again, it's a shoulder screw. Make sure that that bracket is not trapped underneath the screw that it's free to rotate. So that part's all good. It only leaves the arm, really. So, from the mechanical point of view here, we've got to get all that grease and rubbish off there. When that's done, we can clean the, gra the glass. That's just old grease and dirt. You can see how much came off there. And through the pivot. And on the lower surface too there. You can see how much dirt came off there. I've just clean that cam surface. These components. Let's get another cotton bud here. Here again, I'm mostly interested in removing any trace of old grease and the dust that it's gathered up. And the wavy washer, the same thing. That will have gathered up dirt and rubbish too. The wavy washer is important. That's a spring which acts to keep the rangefinder arm stable. If you didn't have that washer or if all the uh, waves were flattened out the arm would be able to flap, it would be able to flap up and down because it wouldn't be held down firmly. The spring holds it down firmly. If you had too much tension on your wavy washer or too much friction the rangefinder arm wouldn't return to the uh, infinity position reliably. So it's important that the wavy washer looks like it's got obvious waves to it. But um, if, you, if it's dead flat, you're going to have to put them back. But don't overdo it. The other factor is that if you overdo it, you'll find that it won't go around the bush. And obviously it needs to be able to go around the bush. Now, so I'll put that to one side. Turn my attention to the glass now here. Now that's just a plain piece of glass, that lens. And so it can be cleaned with glass cleaner and a cotton bud. So, usually with dealing with lenses of any sort, you start with the outside surface. It's usually the easiest one to get to. And when you've got that clean, it's much easier to ju <coughs> excuse me, judge how successful you've been at cleaning the internal surface, which is, of course, uh, usually a bit more awkward to get to. So I can judge the outside surface easily. That's virtually flat. And you can judge from reflected light whether you've got all the rubbish off it. The inside surface is quite heavily concave. It's very hard to judge how clean you've got a concave surface because you don't have the uh, benefit of seeing the reflected light on that surface to the same extent. But if you've cleaned the outside surface first, then you can look through the lens 
to see how well you did at cleaning the internal surface. And that looks very good. So I'll just blow any dust out of that. And that can go back on the range finder body. Right, so taking a very light wipe of molybdenum paste here, you could use grease. I'm just putting a wipe through the centre. I'll put a light wipe, much lighter wipe, on this top surface. That's the one that goes up against the body of the rangefinder. We can fit the bush in place. Take our rangefinder. Now this spring has to be trapped through that slot there. So I'm just going to put a wipe of molybdenum paste on that spring. We'll run that spring through that little slot. Bring the arm back round. The wavy washer, I should have given that a wipe of molybdenum paste. I'll do that over here out of the view of the camera. Our wavy washer drops on there. And our pinhead screw drops on there. And with a pair of tweezers, I should be able to run that into position. You can see our washer's popped out of place there. I need to get that centred back up. The screw's not picked up yet. Now I'm not finding the finding the thread. Let's take that off. Oh, miles away. This spring is very strong. It's pulling everything out of alignment for me. Now I'm in business. Okay. That was just that spring. Wavy washer dropping into place. I'll nip that screw up. Right, before we put this back in the camera body, this fork here, that picks up on the post on the arm. So I'm just going to put a light wipe of molybdenum paste to the inside faces of that fork. If I swing the fork outwards, bring my arm in, it's, the fork's picked up. When this camera catches up, you'll be able to see that as I move the arm, not only is this moving of course, but it's also coupled to that fork which is coupled to this which moves our parallax correction here. Right, so that range find is ready to go back in the camera body. I don't I won't show you the other range finders unless I find some problem with them that needs attention that you need to know about. Otherwise, it's just going to be all exactly the same again. So it may be that you don't see me again until I'm ready to put this back in the camera body. This, of course, is the rangefinder from camera number three.
Well, the rangefinder from camera number one presented no problems. There was nothing interesting to show you there. This is the rangefinder off camera number two. As you can see, it's quite sticky. See how slowly that returns. That should be returning pretty much instantaneously, but that's just gummed up. That means that it probably wouldn't return to the infinity position particularly well. So that's, uh, that's an example of a rangefinder that certainly needs to be serviced. Still with rangefinder from camera number two, I was cleaning the front glass of the finder here, the uh, semi-silvered mirror, and as you can see, it's loose. Uh, it actually fell out on me, it flicked away. So what I'll have to do is lock that in place with a touch of lacquer, before I clean it, I think. I can't put it in the ultrasonic like that. The glass would simply wriggle out and um, I don't want anything touching the semi-silvered surface inside. So that's interesting. I wasn't expecting to see that. And of course I'll have to have a close look at my other range finds. I think I can tell from where it, the marks on here that it came from right there. This little clamp that holds it down, that's adjustable. It's adjustable in this plane. Now, I can see from a scratch mark there that someone has marked that, probably because they made a change to it or removed it or did something. If you do your adjustments here, you change the tilt of this mirror, which uh, changes the vertical alignment of your uh, rangefinder images. There's another way of making changes there, which is much more subtle. So, looking at this, I'd say that that bracket is a little bit bent, so that it's not clamping down as firmly as it should do. And so the only thing holding this in place was that little touch of lacquer, which is no longer doing its job. So I'm going to have to take this bracket off, I think, bend it down so that it's got more clamp, and put it back. I hate disturbing this. As I say, it'll change the vertical alignment. A tiny change here is a major change in a vertical alignment. I'm going to have to try and get this right. But obviously I'm going to have to take the bracket off, straighten it out so that it's got more tension, and put it back. Looking at this from the side, I don't really... You can see, actually, there's a slight bend in this. At the midpoint where the screw's clamping it down, it's slightly bent there. I'll just straighten that bend out and put it back. This is exciting. Well, that certainly did the job. It stays where it's put now, whereas previously it wouldn't. I think I've got it back in the same position. I don't really know. I'm going to put a tiny drop of lacquer on that bracket and uh, hopefully it'll stay where it's put through the cleaning process. Well, I have my four rangefinders all clean and apparently functional. Um, you saw me do one of them. I mentioned that one of them had a loose mirror in there that I needed to deal with. One of them gave me virtually no trouble at all. Number four, that's the one for the uh, ugly parts camera. That was entertaining because I had to make that up out of the parts of two range finders. Various things were wrong with it. Uh, most noticeably, the screw that holds the return spring on the front, it appeared that it was just missing. And of course the spring was missing, so I thought I'll just take that from my other parts rangefinder and put it on there. The screw had been snapped off. Somebody had over tightened it, I presume, and sheared it off. So I had to drill out the screw to get rid of it. And the other thing that was wrong with that one was the pellicle, the screen that gives us our frame lines. In this particular one, somebody 
had apparently tried to clean that with something very unfortunate. The sort of uh, ground glass looking screen there, which is probably plastic, but it is plastic, that had been obviously very damaged by solvent, and so that whole thing was ruined, so I had to transfer in the frame mask from the other parts rangefinder. But I do have four rangefinders all back together, apparently functional, and now all I want to do is, all I'll need to do is put these into the camera bodies and adjust the rangefinders. I'll have two lots of adjustments I'll need to make. We'll be adjusting the rangefinder itself for the images so that the horizontal and vertical alignment of the images are correct. And then we've got the frame. The frames that pop up when you put in the appropriate lens, that also may well need adjustment. So most of those adjustments are made on the arms in the camera, or the one for the frame certainly is. Most, most of our rangefinder adjustments will be done up here on this arm. We'll get into it piece by piece. Hopefully it'll go smoothly. Because once the range finders are in, the next thing I'll need to do is clean up the top covers. The leatherettes will be going on last of all. There's a reason for that. <laughs> 